Hi everyone, welcome to the Real Estate Show. It's the June edition and segment one is our Market Watch segment where we get together each month, <coughs> take a look at a snapshot of statistics provided by the Southern Oregon Multiple Listing Service that tells us kind of a snapshot of what the market has done, 2014 to 2015. And we also update you with all kinds of pertinent information and up to the minute information from our local market and things that are trending and pushing our local market in the directions that we chart each month. Glad to have you along everybody. Got an expert panel across from me tonight that I'm going to introduce to you, but we're going to lose one of our panel members after tonight's show, Ooh. which is going to be a big loss because it's the gentleman that I've worked for for the last five years and one of the mainstays of this program and of real estate media in Southern Oregon for the last 15 years, Bob Gervais. Welcome, Bob. Good to be here. Great to have you along for one more Market Watch. Remax Ideal is going to uh, complete its participation in the show, but what a great five years we've had together. And, and I, I think of the information that's been passed on to our real estate consumers. I'm really proud of the, the partnership we've had. Thank you. All right, we're going to reflect. To we're going to reflect and, and nostalgicize a little bit before we're done tonight with the. You're not going to burn me, are first you? Segment. No, it's a roast, actually, yeah, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't know what's coming, but yeah, we do. <laughs> But no, we're just gonna we're gonna thank you for some great participation. Next to Bob is Guy Giles from Ditech Mortgage. Welcome, Guy. Hey, thank you very much. Good to have you along, and I'm sure you're busy right now with the real estate market booming along and, and things it's, moving right along. Yeah, I I think I'm as busy as I've ever been. Yeah. So not complaining. That's a good thing. Keeping things moving, keeping people moving to the homes and yeah. on their way. That's what we like to hear. And uh, Brad Bennington, the Howdy. CEO of the Home Builders Association yeah. of Jackson County. Welcome back, Brad. By golly, good to be here. Yeah, good to have you back and uh, still still have, have the hammers flying. I hear houses being built all around me in Southwest Bedford right now in my part of the neck of the woods there. Yes. And that's a, that's a wonderful sound. I've not heard that for ages now. And I hear a couple of crews working just around the corner from me. And yeah, you're hearing, you're hearing those nail guns uh, go as fast as they'll go. And we'll, we'll probably talk about that after a little bit. Yeah, we will. And we're also going to touch on the fact that, that we touched on on our radio show last Saturday and that we've got some opportunities for some skilled laborers. Boy, howdy. A big demand that, that we need to fill, and we're gonna have some more information for folks tonight on that as well. Welcome, all of you. So let's start with just a Market Watch update from each of your exquisite perspectives on the local market. <laughs> I know we're selling a lot of homes, and we're gonna see some numbers that uh, reflect that as well, but uh, just uh, last year to this year, and as we continue this recovery, Bob, from the real estate agency side of things, you're happy, man. The momentum continues to grow, and um, prices continue to stabilize and, and grow. I anticipate uh, we'll continue to see that happen as they run out of water in, in, uh, in California. I talked with a, an agent today that you know, will be joining us hopefully in the next couple of weeks from uh, Southern California. and. Uh, the newspaper in Long Beach said anybody that spends more than a penny over their bill is going to get a big fine if mm, they go wow. beyond it. So wow. it's going to affect lots of things, all the pool builders and all those people down there. They want a green lawn. They need to kind of probably spray paint their lawn uh, green and put rock in it or something like that. So um, and, and I do anticipate, and I don't, I can't. I'm just looking through that crystal right. ball, but I really do think in the next uh, six or eight months, we're <clears> going to see our interest rates uh, jump a little bit here, mm. too. So uh, I'll let our finance expert deal with that. Perfect but. segue to Guy Giles. Hey, after a whole year of saying that they're not going to go up, they just went up. So <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I, think there's, I think there's a little bit over overdone right now i think they'll that we'll still get a little bit of ease on them but um uh, they're they're definitely going up right now um everybody's just some overall strength in the market and people are trying to earn some money faster in the stock market than mm -hmm. they would long term on the mortgage-backed securities right now so we've seen a little tick up in the last two and a half weeks probably a little over a quarter percent up in rate to three eighths so they're 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 on the rise a little bit i i expect a little bit of a dip i don't think they're I, I think they're about where they're going to get. So and we'll bet lunch on that one. But <laughs> yeah, you're, you're uh, right as far as, yeah, they, they've gone up some. And, 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 and they, they still could some more. Yeah. Didn't we see a little bump before and then they came back down a little mm -hmm. bit? And I, I think that's going to be part of the process going forward to continue to stimulate our recovery and to, to be able to make things happen for us to grow. Yeah, I, I, 
I, I don't think they're going through the roof. You know, anything under a six percent, still historically. I mean, we have oh, really yeah, good well, rates. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I, we're in good shape as far as yeah, as we're far not as that the, is. The panic button here. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. People are still, you know, well, they're still locking in lower than I got, and I do this thing for a living. So, yeah. you know, they're not bad. You said I'd just rock back and forth when I got in this chair, and you're right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> as long as the information comes out, we're good. It's whatever it takes to make it happen. Oh my. Brad, um, interest rates tick up yeah. a little bit. Uh, medium prices are rising for new home sales and for existing homes. Yeah. How's yeah. that? How's that uh, shape your picture? Yeah, it, it has a big effect. First, first thing I want to uh, say is, you know, thank you to Bob for bringing all this good information to us for these last five years. You've got a lot of people that really pay attention to what you say, and what a pleasure it is for me to have gotten to know you a little bit on this show. And I sure appreciate your wisdom. I'll tell you that. Thank you. Uh, the other thing that Bob was telling people back in uh, 2011 and 2012 is all these bargain properties aren't going to last. And Bob was telling people that back in 2012 and 2013, people started to listen a little bit and realize that these good deals weren't going to last. And what we have now, as Bob just said, is we have more demand than we have supply in general, in general, on the housing market, and when it comes to new homes, we're way out of whack. Mm, yeah. We have, if you have somebody that comes to town and says, okay, I want a new home, and here's what I want, and here's where I want it to be, you're gonna, as a realtor, you're gonna look at them and say, oh, wow, because uh, the supply, we're building as fast as we can, but it's just, uh, we can't keep up. Yeah. We can't keep up. So. The interest rates going up uh, had to happen, you know, I mean, zero wasn't sustainable. And, and the, these, as Guy said, you know, these rates historically had never been this low. So we knew this was gonna happen. But the rates are, uh, they have plenty of room to go up and still maintain a lot of vigor in the market. Right. You know, we do have, we've got two big reasons. One Bob talked about, and, uh, which is the uh, availability of water problem. But you know what else happened up here in Oregon is this little thing called Measure 91. And as of July 4th, which is just around the corner, it's gonna be legal for people to grow marijuana in Oregon. We talked about a little bit this on our last show. But believe it or not, and I'm as shocked as anybody, we have people coming to Oregon to buy property with that in mind. Yeah. And so it's, they've got big, they've got checkbooks with lots of money in them and you know, just show me some property and I'm gonna buy it. They're not people coming to buy these properties. Jeff from our Grants Pass office told us they're LLCs coming in with checkbooks as big as you can ask for, and they're buying up all the properties well with the senior water rights that they can get their hands on. Yeah, and, yeah, and gonna... some cash. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, if you're thinking about that, that's called laundering of funds, and that's the federal government really doesn't <laughs> we like on that. that. We, we'll accept a check, but we won't <laughs> accept $350,000 in yeah. cash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee can full of thousand dollar bills doesn't work then? No. That won't work. Oh my gosh. But uh, it's, it's something to really keep an eye on. There's going to be a huge demand for the rural properties, and that's going to have, have its own effect on property values and all of that going forward. Well, well the two, the two counties, Oregon has 36 counties, and the two counties that really got hurt the worst in, in the housing crash uh, were Jackson County and Deschutes County. Right. And Bend and Medford share demographics that are very similar yep. in a lot of ways. Ben began their recover, recovery earlier, but uh, they have been having a very robust recovery. And the market factors that Bob and Guy have talked about are very definitely kicking in. And um, I hate to say this, but you know, people that didn't take advantage of those bargains when they were there, they're gonna have to come to the table with a little bit more money now to get to buy that same home that they used to be able to get. Yeah, if you've been sitting on the fence, <laughs> You might as well take up residence there because it's, it's human nature. Because that ship has sailed. People want to buy low and sell yeah. high, but they do the opposite. They buy when everybody's in a frenzy to buy houses. You really need to concentrate it and and time your purchase. You know because money's made when you purchase, not when you sell. Yeah. So. Um, and isn't why that, and, uh, isn't and, that why we do this program? And and oh by the way, I I wasn't. In, any stretch of the imagination trying to say that interest rates were going to go to 14 percent. I'm, I'm, the number I'm looking at is maybe five, hovering five, which is still historically, I mean, if, if you, you could, if you factor in the appreciation that they're going to get on 
on the houses. You know, it's yes, not going to yeah. hurt you at all to yeah. take a little bit of a higher. Take rate. a little more to get in, and, but you're you're going to be in the game and get all the benefits that come with that. And, they, and just know that the, those rates wouldn't be going up if the economy wasn't getting better. And if right. it doesn't get better, they won't. If it does, then they will. And overall, a little bit higher rates just means more stabilization everywhere. More so I've seen the equity in my house turn around ninety thousand dollars in the last four years mm -hmm. in Southwest Medford. It's isn't that amazing? Yeah, it really is, and that's that that's the faith. In the process and and what it's all about, just to to hang in there and and that's that's what that's what the basis of a lot of our American wealth is built on is that home ownership. Uh, before we get into the market watch, let's talk just a little bit about the local job market for home building, yeah. for the construction trades, because we're at a just a critical deficit for um, uh, employees. And we are. I think there's some young people out there that are looking for a family wage job, something they could do maybe with their hands that doesn't have to go to school for all these years and uh, could really set themselves up for a great career, set you themselves bet. up for a great family situation, working on the local trades so the opportunity is come, coming roaring back. Yeah. Well, you know, when, when uh, you and Bob and I graduated high school, and I have to leave Guy out of this discussion because yeah. he's too young. <laughs> he's still got the least amount of hair, though. That's <laughs> messed up. <laughs> When we graduated high school, we, we uh, did that in a time when you were actually functionally able to be an employee right out of high school. You, we, were, uh, we were given the skills in high school that we needed to go out and get jobs that we could actually support ourselves For all with. of the different interests that we had. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and, and you know, and, and you know, I mean, I'm a local Southern Oregon guy, you know, born, uh, born and raised. So, but what ha what's happened is, is, uh, the workforce has changed, things have changed, and for the last 30 years, uh, the school system has really tr tried to push kids toward becoming white collar professionals. Mm -hmm. So the construction trades have been losing people for a long, long time, and now, I mean, just for instance, and you and I have talked about this, the average age of a brick mason in the United States is 58 years old. So this isn't a local problem to Oregon, this is a national problem. And what we have now is, is we have really a critical shortage of skilled labor in the construction trades really all across our nation, but we're really feeling it very, very acutely here in Southern Oregon mm -hmm. because here in Southern Oregon, we only have four people working today for every 10 people we had working 10 years ago in the construction trade. And our demand is almost back up to where and, it was. And our demand is coming back up, and then you factor uh, also in this unfortunate reality that a lot of the people that we do have working are only a few years away from retirement. So we have a shortage now. We have a much more acute shortage just around the corner. And there really isn't any young, there aren't enough young people uh, in the pipeline. And we, we've got a problem we're going to have to deal with. Yeah, and conversely, there's not enough white collar jobs out there for those people that are graduating. Correct. Not Especially here. in our area. Not yeah. here. Not in Southern Oregon. Yeah. Not in Southern Oregon. Yeah. Right and there's that's the, and there lies the deficit. Right. And we're looking for those family wage jobs. They're out there. How can someone who maybe would like to get interested learn more about it? How can they get into the trades, Brad? What are the avenues that are open? You know, have, have them contact us at our office, uh, 773-2872. We've got good relationships with the vocational education resources that are here. We're actually working right now with RCC and with some of our local educational organizations to try and, and address this. Uh, at the state level, uh, Sal Esquivel, Re uh, Representative Sal Esquivel is working on a bill to, to, at the state level to provide more funds for vocational education. Yeah. So uh, this, this is something that uh, the people in higher academia, they're finally realizing that there are other jobs that need to be done that are vocationally oriented. And this is something that they kind of lost sight of for a while. And we talked about that Saturday on the radio show, it's a mission of our educational institutions in our region to match the training and the courses and the offerings with to the work. opportunities that are going to be there and right. the demands for jobs and employment. So. And the great, the great thing about construction trades, uh, there's such satisfaction in building, number one. Number two, all the money stays local. And the other thing that, that I think is just really wonderful to young people that learn these trades is, is that you can't outsource it. You know, when you need that concrete poured or when you need that gazebo framed up or when you need that, that brick laid, that, that's as local as it gets, and you can't outsource that to anybody. That's all local activity. And if your average age of bricklayers is 58. Oh, my. Uh, I'm 55, and I'm in pretty. I'm hanging in there pretty well, but you ain't getting that many bricks out of me in a day as you are a 25-year-old. No way. The guy that framed. Especially the next day. The guy that framed our <laughs> exhibition house in Eagle Point that we just completed, 
The guy that framed that house, 66 years old. Wow. Yeah, we need some young blood. We do. Home Builders Association of Jackson County, hbjac.com, and you can get some information on how you, you might bet. be able to find yourself a great opportunity for, for your future if you're a young man out there looking for some uh, work in the trades. There's we gonna need be some, young people. There are going to be some great opportunities. Let's get to our market watch, and then we're going to have our big send off for Bob before we're <laughs> done with the market watch segment tonight. But first, we're going to milk him for every bit of information we can <laughs> before we turn him loose tonight after many, many years of sharing his great knowledge with our real estate consumers. As you know, it's a three month snapshot from 2014 to 2015 when we take a look at our statistics provided by the Southern Oregon Multiple Listing Service. Existing home sales, March, April, and May 2014 to 2015. We've sold a few more, but a few more days on the market and the median price continues to come up, about a 10% increase from 2014 to 2015. Bob. Why are we selling more homes, but they're on the market more days? Well, people have, that have wanted to sell for some time are starting to come into the market, so we have a fairly good supply of inventory. Some new, it's, some new, it's, it's fresh, some new fresh offerings coming. Yeah, I mean, but still, uh, I think we're looking at something called an absorption rate. An absorption rate is how many months supply do you have based on how much how many homes you're selling in an area normally it's about six months right. i think we may be, have eight months but i can remember back in about 2008 when the absorption rate for example in rogue river was a nine-year supply right. of yeah. homes yeah. so obviously to sell a home on a like for like basis you would have to price your home to sell at the bottom end of the market. So now it's stabilizing a little bit more. And we're seeing a, a great amount of activity, particularly in, in uh, properties that are selling under $500,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's been a big uptick. That two fifty dollars to $500,000 range is, is really hot. Now, some, you know, some properties I looked at with some investors that were you know four years ago, three years ago in the two thirty five range are 293 10 minimum now so you can see that reflected in the slide the uh, medium price there up 39 percent from 2010 well, the, is considered pretty pretty significant recovery from the, the, other, big the other thing that we see going on is that the sellers are coming in with a lot more confidence and they're saying you know what i don't have to take a low ball offer and i'm willing to wait a few more days yeah. to get a better qualified buyer yeah. There was a house that recently sold in Eagle Point, and the buyers, they couldn't, they couldn't get appraisals because there's still some pollution of the market from distressed properties a little yeah. bit. We've talked about that before. The buyer, they said, they said, well, if you still want to buy the house at this price, you're going to have to come up with an extra $30,000 cash. And you know what? They did it. Wow. They did it. They threw an extra thirty grand in the deal to make it work. Yeah. And multiple offers and very competitive bidding for the good properties and the well-priced properties that are out there right it's now. It's important to understand that we are in an upswing market yep. right now. Yeah. And, you know, if you were to evaluate how to price a house, you have what the seller thinks the property's worth and what the buyer thinks the property's worth. And somewhere in between is the appraiser and the agent. And the agent and the appraiser are the arrow, but the Asian is the tip of, he's the tip of the arrow. He's telling you, the agent will tell you there's no properties available in the market at this price. When an appraiser is looking at the last six months worth of mm, right. uh, um, sales or comps or that sort of thing. We've, so, we've had that, yeah. We've, so, that, that's a great point. So we may find that appraisals are coming in a little less a little light, than we're yeah. than Just because the, the market's market moving is. so fast. Yeah, it's, it's coming in multiple best. offers, and it is difficult because that appraiser is bound to what is sold also, yep. not, you know, I mean, it's just been a shift. You know, I remember the old, old days when it was what someone was willing to pay for it, just miraculously right. that appraisal would hit. But now, which is good for the market, I mean, overall, it's going to be really healthy for everybody. Yep. They're, they're, you know, having to base them on a little bit more realistic things. And he's absolutely correct that, you know, that's that's a huge factor, and that appraisal has to hit, and if not... They come in with more money, and frequently they do at this yep. at this if time. They want the house. They they will. Yeah. Reality real estate is what we're we're into, <laughs> not not the fantasy real estate market that we went through at one stretch there. New construction home sales, 
Uh, 77 for 2014, 71 for 2015. Good steady numbers there. Medium price up 16%, Brad. That's that's good to see because the, the market is around the new home sales is coming as well. Yeah. So you see that the price, um, comparing to your last slide, you see that the price on new homes is coming up much faster than the price on homes in general. And that's a trend that's going to continue. We've talked before about the fact that a lot of the uh, cost factors and price factors on new homes have nothing to do with demand. They just are what they are. Yep. Pipe costs more, sheetrock costs yep. more, appliances cost more. Builders can't do anything about any of that. All they can do is buy the products at market price, install them in the home, and they have to be those, paid for a long Those time. are hard fixed costs. Those are hard fixed costs, and there's, there's uh, nothing that the builder can do about that. And what, what I'm going to uh, tell you is that you're going to see the median price continue to increase and people will look back to this 2070 median and say, gosh, I wish I'd have bought wish that. Wish I would have, yeah. yeah. Would have, should have, could have. Let me make another point. And, and the word cost in definition, um, what somebody pays for a house and how much money they have into it vis-a-vis -a, -vis a whole bunch or a whole little, a little, has nothing to do with market value. The definition of market value is not what one person will pay for it, but what several people will pay for it. And, right. and so a guy bought the house in 2008 for a two-bedroom, uh, three-bath house built in 05 for $135,000, the market today is going to dictate that it's going to be more like two hundred thousand yep. dollars. Yep. What he paid for it makes no difference. Yeah. It's what somebody's willing that's, to pay. That's yeah. what it is now, and the market has moved really quickly. And the, the seven years that we've charted it on this show, well, uh, Bob, the, the Bob's ups absolutely, and downs have been incredible. Bob's absolutely right on existing homes, and so on on new homes where the builders are actually building these to make a profit. This is why I always said you realtors are so smart. Because when you sell a property, you make some money no matter what the price point right. is. You make a little bit of money. Builders don't make any money at all until our sales price... Dang it, the secret's out. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I just can't handle a hammer, we, so what do I do? We don't make a single dollar until our sales price exceeds our cost of doing business. So we have to sell that house for more than it costs us or, you know, the entertainment value just isn't enough to keep us doing it. So the good news is, is that the market has come back and we have buyers... And to me, the unfortunate part is, is far and away, the majority of the new homes that we're selling are to, are, are to people that are uh, coming in from our area and not, and not mover-uppers. We used to have a mover-upper market where we were selling nice homes to our, our younger people mm -hmm. who had gotten out in the workplace and worked for a while and saved some money and wanted to get into a nicer home. That market almost doesn't exist anymore. Most of the new homes that we're selling are to people that are relocating to our area and not our young people that are moving up. Interesting. Hopefully that will change. Rural property sales, about dead even last year to this year. Medium price at 305. All homes on the market, right around the same. A few less on the market. This uh, reflects the demand that we have. Only 33 REOs and 18 short sales in that 1162 number we see for 2015. Yep, yep. And distressed properties are still... Thankfully, few and far between, but they're still going to continue to trickle onto our market. Normal sales dominating the closed transactions at 88%. So good numbers right there. It continues to reflect the trend of appreciating yeah. values, um, significant demand for properties right now, and we'll continue to chart the progress as we go forward. Going forward, though, we're going to do so without one of our really good friends and uh, one of the gentlemen that has lent some of the most knowledge and best insight to this program this last five years, Bob Gervais. It's our last night to sit with Bob on the TV set, and we just had our last radio show. Thank you, Bob, not only for Remax Ideal's support and sponsorship of the program, but more importantly, for yourself and the agents and the people that you brought from the agency to the program and the knowledge that they've brought. Just on the real estate level, before we talk about our community as a whole, uh, I think we've just had a great success and. I hope you've enjoyed the, the time you've been with us and all that you've had the opportunity to it's, share because um, we've benefited greatly. It's been a passion of mine to, to help people and that's what I've attempted to do. Uh, I just get, I'm just getting to the point in my life after last year's surgery, I had a, a fairly intense surgery last year that I'm gonna, I've started to take things off my plate 
I was on the budget committee for 12 years for the city of Medford. I was on several um, boards of nonprofit organizations. Uh, I continue to teach and try to do business and whatever. And uh, it's just time for me just to cool my jets a little bit here and maybe uh, golf. Will by the way, we have a golf tournament coming up, so you know. It, uh, it's full up. We don't need to sell any any slots in it. They're, yeah, they're it's, it's going to be a great deal. But it's it's been a joy um, to be on this program, to be able to share, to be able to help people, and that's always been my intent. So. And, and people should know you, in your office, teach every Saturday morning pretty much and very active in developing and helping your agents learn so that they can in turn help their clients and provide the best service that they can. So it's a very successful agency and that's because of your stamp that you put on it and congratulations. There's an old expression that goes, any problem's easy once you know the solution. So it'd be better to, we were talking about, I wish I could go back so many years. Well, I wouldn't want to go back unless I took my brain with me, okay? Mm. <laughs> we, I think we'd all like to take a ticket, take a ride on, on that bus. <laughs> And your contributions to the community beyond just the real estate endeavors. Uh, Southern Oregon's got talent and uh, tens of thousands of dollars that have been raised and lives that have been touched by that. Thank you for that as well. You're welcome. And we'll say goodbye for the show, but not for our friendship and for what's going to well, continue. I, I hope uh, we've developed a friendship that will last a long time. And, and who knows? You may want to invite me back occasionally just to say hi. That's going to happen. This will not be Bob's last appearance on The Real Estate Show. We can guarantee you that because he's too good of a friend and he knows too many good things. And we just wouldn't be as smart without him. So Bingo. Thank you. Anything yeah. nice you'd like to say about Bob? Dude, I love him to death. He's just one of those guys that will always, it doesn't even matter if it's somebody from another real estate office. I think if they walked in and had a question, he'd probably spend an hour and a half with them with nothing to gain. You just rarely meet somebody like that. And I've been really blessed to hang out with him. And well, he's my neighbor, so we'll hang yeah. out a bunch more. Good to go. All right. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Very much. Guy and Brad, thank you as well for another great market watch. We're bringing you back, so. Thank you. We can come thank, back? Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, you guys you guys have to come back and try to fill so, the void. So don't, yeah. I, left by don't I get to say any nice things about Bob? You sure can. Okay. So, Bob, thank you so much for all that you do. And most of the time, you, you know, people like to get lots of credit, and you're not one of those people. You know, you just like to do good stuff, and you don't even really care who gets the credit. And guys, guys like that are kind of hard to find. And. You make Southern Oregon a better place, and I'm really, I'm really grateful for that. Thank you. And uh, Bob's company always participates in our golf tournament, our benefit golf tournament. Our 21st consecutive annual golf tournament is June 12th, which is this Friday. We're putting that on with our friends at Rogue Valley Association Realtors. The beneficiary is Redemption Ridge, which is an organization that rescues and rehabilitates victims of sex trafficking here in Southern Oregon. So we're really, really looking forward to raising a lot of money for them this Friday. All the proceeds go to Redemption Ridge. Yep. And I think you can see, folks, why we partner with people like Brad and Guy and Bob on this show, because they're very like-minded with our approach to the community and not only the industry that we serve and we participate and try to help our clients in, but just helping to kind of make Medford a better place. And well said, Medford is a better place because of Bob Gervais' presence you here. Bet. And, we, and we're gonna we're gonna get a lot more out of you before you're done. You're gonna squeeze, squeeze the <laughs> yeah. turn up, huh? You're right. We're, we're not done with you yet. We're gonna say just uh, so long, not goodbye. I think uh, that's all right, said. that's a deal. Thank you guys for a great segment as always. You bet. Thanks. And we'll do it again next month. And folks, stay tuned. The Rogue Valley Association of Realtors is due up next. People Castro will be in with an update with our new partners in the program. Stay tuned. <laughs>